Ladies and gentlemen, Dream Chaser here, your crazy nocturnal husky. And I'm here to bring you a vlog update of my most recent conventions. This time being in the Furcon and Mythic Fermi. Um, before I start rambling, I would like to apologize for these videos coming out late. I meant to get these out at the beginning of the week. But honestly, I was tired. Conventions wear me out. I did them two times in a row. And I'm nocturnal. My schedule's all kind of fucked up. Uh, the other thing is, while it has been per it has been fixed by the time that you'll see this video, is I apologize for the ones who realized while I was editing Whose Lion Is It Anyway? Some of the first videos that finally got up, I accidentally deleted it while I was editing it on my phone. I have quickly remedied this problem and got it up as fast as I can. I do apologize for the few people who did see it first and liked it. Things happen. Husky not good with phone. Anyway, now on to the important stuff. Let's talk about conventions. Uh, first one, let's talk about these things in order. The first one was Indie Furcon, which happened about two, now about three weeks ago. <clears throat> it, I, I actually thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, I was finally able to get back up to Indianapolis, for the ones who don't know. Um, I'm actually from Indianapolis. And it was nice to finally get up and be able to see some of my family again. Although, that failed epically. Apparently, I didn't give them enough notice. Sometimes I'm bad with that. And I was only able to hang out with my sister, which, I mean, and, and, and her kids. So, I got to see someone. It was nice, but I was hoping to see more. But, uh, anyway. Um, about the con, it was really cool. Like, any fur con, for the ones who have not been, the bestest way I can describe it would be somewhat of, like, a, a furry party con. Um, they focused a lot on entertainment, which was really cool. I loved watching it, and I laughed my ass off. But it was really interesting, because the staff members were, um, also getting on in the party. With a lot of booze. I don't know if you should mix staff members and booze, but this con does, and it was awesome. <laughs> the con goers were drunk, the staff members were drunk, tons of money went up in the air and went towards their charity, and it was great. Um, I, I was actually able to sit down and, and, and watch a lot of the, the crazy shows that were going on, and um, I, I will have to say... Uh, Uncle Kage uh, um, and Alkali, um, while, while being really drunk and have some really interesting stories, um, <laughs> I can't wait to see more of them. <laughs> Fortunately, it seems like they're primarily focused on Northern Cons, and I sadly live in the South. Um, I, I am trying to get to Anthrocon next year with a few of my friends, so I'm hoping to be able to squeeze in a few more entertainment panels. But, uh, Indie Furcon was great. Um, they finally broke, uh, a thousand member, a thousand attendees. Um, they had, what was it? Um, uh, 1,010? Or was it, no, it was, it was 1010, so it would have been 1,110. No, it would have been 1,010. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 1,010. 10, 10. I can't count. I'm a husky. Anyway, now I'm rambling. <laughs> Yay! But, uh, yeah, they, they were able to get 10, 10 attendees, about 300 fursuiters, and raised over $10,000 to their charity, which was great. Um, and it, it was really, really fun. Um, sadly, I don't know if I'm going to be able to attend next year. For the ones who do know, you know, my pocketbook kind of runs dry. 
and it sucks. This, this furry right here does not have a lot of money or time. And my work is very, very unforgiving sometimes about letting me get off. So I was lucky to be able to hit the few cons I have this fall. But I have so much more in the work for next year. I have a few more cons I want to try out and I want to hit Anthrocon. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I would love to be able to squeeze it in. But with as many cons that go back to back to back to back, it's hard. Not to mention doing two cons back to back wore me out. I can only think what it would be if I tried to do a month of them. <laughs> I, I would need a, a, a doggy house and, and med leave and, 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 and yeah, not good. But uh, it's also probably one of the first cons I actually got drunk in, which is sad. I'm 27 years old, and I finally got slightly bit tipsy at Indy Furcon, which is great because I got drunk in my own state. 27 years later, but I finally got drunk. And I thought that was great until Mifit Furmeat, where I got drunk off my ass. <laughs> but uh, Indy Furcon, uh, excuse me, Mifit Furmeat. Um, great con, great con. Um, Mythic for me, I was asked to come by one of my friends, uh, Shelby Binterong, um, and he's kind of partly got me into this furry fandom about a year or two ago, and He's a crazy, crazy man who works too hard and gets himself involved in almost every convention around him, including this one. So, it took him a little bit, but he finally dragged my ass to Mississippi. I don't know how that happened, but he finally did it. And, uh... <clears throat> and... About three months before the con started, he got me into a Telegram chat for uh, Mythit Fermi. And I don't usually use Telegram that much. Um, some, cha you know, some chat groups are a lot more active than others. And Telegram kills your battery if the thing's constantly going ding, 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 ding. And I've been in those groups. And I've silenced my phone on many of them. And then I never returned. Um, Mythic for Meat was nice, because with the 70 something people that earn it now, I actually stopped talking at night. <laughs> but uh, I got put into this group about um, three months before the con started. And I thought I'd type in, get to know them a little bit, you know, see what I'm getting myself into, try to make some friends before I actually go to this con. And, you know, like every normal person, I would ask questions trying to figure out what I'm getting myself into. Like, how would you describe this con? And pretty much everyone described it exactly the same way. Uh, they described it as a furry family reunion. And, you know, when, when you hear the terms furry family reunion, you, some ideas come to mind. I mean... I'm pretty sure most of you guys have been to a family reunion at least once or twice. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. It really all depends on what your relationship is with your own family. Or, or how big it is. In my case, I can't even count all the family members I have. My family's humongous. <clears throat> but, uh... Actually, after finally getting to Mythic Fermi uh, last week, um, I, I can honestly say I'm in that same boat. Like, the best way to describe Indy Furcon is a furry family reunion. Um, well, they've been going around for about 20 years, uh, just like Anthrocon, this year they celebrate their 20th anniversary. They're probably one of the longest running furry cons. Uh, and it, it originally started as a, a pizza gathering, a furry pizza meetup, uh, 20 years ago. And 
they only are seeing about 500 people. And it's kind of sad. Because this is probably one of the few cons I've been to that it's very laid back. Everyone pretty much knows everyone. And, you know, we just all kind of get along. And, you know, like most cons, there's activities going on throughout the week. And, you know, you just go out and chill. And it's relaxed. And you don't have to worry about stress and all that kind of stuff. And, and it, it's, it's, it's cool. <clears throat> you know, they're, they're primarily focusing on just, like, you know, togetherness. Not always the, 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 the brightest thing. Although they're always looking for advice to see what kind of stuff we're looking for. So they can improve. So, it, it was really nice. And it had one item that I found very amusing uh, in their con suite, which is open to everyone. And it is amazing. I mean, honestly, tell me, how many cons have you been to where if you buy the basic pass, they feed you all weekend? You know, I, I got really, really, like, spoiled at Indie Furcon because I was able to get into the, the deal, or I mean, the con suite. But I had to buy a sponsorship ticket to do that. <laughs> These guys do it with the niceness of their heart. And I will thank everyone for them, because it was awesome. But they, they have this nice little sign in there that says no drama. And I think every con needs one. And they did such a good job, because I can honestly say this is probably the first con I've been to where there was virtually no drama. And it was lovely. Um, so, yeah. Uh, before I start rambling and, and, and getting very, very incoherent, um, I, I would just like to say uh, that's what I've been doing these last two weekends. Um, I hope you enjoy the few videos I've gotten up. I, I will do a better job at getting more of them up in later time. Um, I think my next convention is going to be in about a month at Super Speedy CiderCon, Tennessee's only furry, er, uh, brony convention. Uh, My Little Pony convention. Sorry. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do after that. Um, coming December, I'm still kind of debating. Uh, I know a lot of friends want to try to drag me up to Myth or, uh, uh, Midwest Fur Fest. But I, I sadly, I don't see that's going to happen. As it's the start of December. And... I work retail. I'm almost guaranteed those dates are going to be locked out and I'm not going to be able to go. Plus, I'm broke. <laughs> so, I may more likely try to attend Yamacon, which is an anime convention up in Pigeon Forge. And, 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 and I may not even attend that convention. I may go to Pigeon Forge to play tourist. Because I did that in July and it was awesome. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, I just I wanted to get this video out to tell you guys what's going on. I hope you enjoy my videos, and I will see you next time. See you later, everyfers.